What is up y'all, it's the Eric V, your stream teach here, and I noticed that a lot of people have an aversion to editing when it comes to their Twitch content. We all know, Twitch discovery, not good. So the solution to that is to get outside of Twitch, be discovered, bring people back to Twitch. How do you do that? Through edited, refined content is my answer, which is why this YouTube channel exists. But also on this YouTube channel, I'm gonna teach you how to edit your Twitch clips into proper TikToks or Twitter videos or Instagram reels or YouTube shorts or whatever you want to turn them into. And that way we will make the magic that people will want to see. I learned DaVinci Resolve just so I could teach you in this video because Resolve is free and the program that I used to edit this video, Vegas, is not. So let's dive into how to make your Twitch clips go from this. And uh, I some stuff. Not real, that's just place. To this. Okay, so I was opening doors. I guess I just forgot that I was pulling levers, opening new doors. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because class is in session. So because this is a beginner video, we're gonna do a few techniques which are very simple. We're going to cut, crop, blur, zoom audio balance and desaturate those are the techniques that i used in the clip that you saw in the beginning of the video so of course if you want to edit a clip the first thing you must do is obtain a clip so i'm going to show you how to download a twitch clip if you didn't know from your own twitch channel you can just go to videos find your clips i find mine by filtering by clips and then once i find a clip i like I'm actually not going to use this exact clip for what we're doing here, but just to show you how to do it. We're going to click on the up arrow, that is our share button, and then I'm clicking on the down arrow, that is our download button. As long as you're signed into your account, you're able to download your clips, no issues, straight from the Twitch channel. So next up, you have to get DaVinci Resolve. So. Let's download that. We will be using DaVinci Resolve 18, which is in beta, and I am using Windows 11. So we will click on DaVinci Resolve, free download now. Like I said, I'm using the Resolve 18 beta. Studio is just the paid version. There's more things in here that aren't really necessary for what we're doing with Switch Clips, unless you wanna get super fancy. Because I'm using Windows, I click on Windows and then it downloads from there. I'm not gonna go through the whole installation process, but if you've ever installed a program on your computer, and I'm assuming you have, it's pretty straightforward. All right, so we're gonna open DaVinci Resolve. It should look something like this the first time you do. It might take a few seconds here, depending on how powerful your computer is. We're gonna click on new project. I'm gonna leave it as default, untitled project two. That's fine for what I'm trying to do. And we have a lot of stuff here. Now, the first thing I want you to do is breathe. <laughs> the second thing, is I'm gonna reset my UI layout just to make sure it matches with yours. Pay attention to this bottom bar. It's really important. Right now it's on cut. We're gonna change that to edit. After we've clicked edit, I want you to click on file and then click on new timeline. From the new timeline, you're unchecking use project settings. And then you're gonna click on format where it says 1920 by 1080. We're gonna switch that to the reverse 1080 by 1920 because we are using something that will be looked at by phones mainly. I'm going to change my frame rate to the frame rate of my stream, which is 60 FPS. If you record in 60 FPS, make sure to switch that to 60 as well. Once we click create, it's now in phone format. So now what I have here is a folder of clips. And what I'm going to do is drag my clip from this folder into Resolve. We're going directly in there. Drag and drop. What we can do from here is determine exactly where we want to make the cuts in our video. And this is called creating an in and out. Double click on the clip here, and then we'll be able to see what we need to. Now, we don't need the entire clip. What I like to do is make sure that I have the setup and the payoff. That's generally how I format my TikToks, just to make sure I'm not wasting the viewer's time. It's the same way I format these YouTube videos. So what I wanna do is capture Laura pulling the lever so that we know what's happening. So once she pulls on it, about there, I'm gonna press the I button to create our in. And because I'm not going to end the TikTok until the video actually ends, I'm not going to create an out. How you create an in is you press I, you create an out by pressing O. 
and you can see the differences on this timeline bar here. So I've created my in, no out necessary because the video ends exactly where I want it to. And then I'm gonna drag from here, this preview window onto the timeline at the bottom. On the timeline at the bottom, the first thing that I notice is that there is some audio down here. And this audio, I tend to like it to almost touch the top and the bottom, but not quite because you don't want the audio to peak. So that's the audio balancing portion. So you see on the right side here, we have our video. And if we play it through with the space bar here, we have everything that we need as far as how the video starts and how the video ends. So what we're about to do now is put on some razzle dazzle. The first thing I'm gonna do is copy this entire footage so I'm going to hold down the control key and then I'm gonna press C as in Charlie. And then I'm right clicking on the timeline and I'm clicking on paste insert. From there, I'm going to drag it to the left. And what I'm doing is dragging this video up top and we're creating a layer. So we have a top video and a bottom video. Now from here, you'll see that we have two audio sources as well, but we only need one. So what I'm doing here is I'm holding down the Alt key and clicking on the audio at the bottom. I'm gonna press the backspace and that will delete the second audio so the audio isn't doubled and sounds distorted. So now we have two video layers on top of each other. So now we have to differentiate them to create the blur effect that you saw. So with the bottom video, I'm going to click on that and make sure you have the playhead over what you're editing so you can see the changes that you're making in real time. Under the player on the right, you'll see a rectangle over here. You're gonna click on that, and then you're gonna click on transform. And then you're gonna grab a corner of that and drag it out. You're gonna drag it out into the bottom and the top, make the black bars on the bottom and the top disappear. So you're just removing the negative space there. We're gonna click on effects in the upper left corner. And then we're gonna come down to the bottom left corner and we will click on open effects. And now we have Gaussian blur. So we're gonna drag this Gaussian blur over this bottom layer of the video. And what that'll do is add some blur, as implied, to this lower video. But it's not blurry like we want it to be yet, right? So in the upper right corner, we're gonna click on the inspector. Inspector opens up more things. All you have to do is click on effects. Once you click on effects, I like my Gaussian blur at about 75%. So I'm gonna raise it up until that blur looks just right to me. And yeah, close enough to 75%. So now we have a difference between the upper layer and the lower layer. The next thing I wanna do is make the cuts that I want to visually. We're gonna go back and what I'm gonna do is make the decisions to cut where I want to before cropping things where I want you to see them. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So as we go through the video, Laura pulls the lever. The door opens and then when the camera angle changes back i don't want you to be able to see me anymore the reason for that is my face isn't important yet i just want you to see the gameplay but the reason i have my face in the beginning is because i want you to see what's happening you're watching a live stream on twitch this is the basic layout of the live stream so i keep it that way for the first few seconds of the video typically so the way you start to do your cuts is you can click on this icon that looks like a razor, or as you can see by the shortcut there, you can press the B key on your keyboard. And all you have to do is click where that playhead is and it's gonna make your cut. So what we're gonna do beyond that is continue to go forward in the video until I wanna make another cut. And where I want my other cut to be is where I start to react to the falling part. We're falling, falling, falling. My face is normal and then it begins to change. So we're gonna make another cut right there. And that's where the video is going to make another cut. And that's where we're gonna zoom in. So I'm gonna press the A key on my keyboard. You can also click the arrow key to go back into your normal editing selection mode. With this other cut where I wanted you to focus on the gameplay, I'm gonna click on the top portion of the video and I'm gonna grab this corner just like we did before. And I'm gonna drag it out until my face disappears. Now what we're gonna do is click on the part where I fall down. We're gonna drag our playhead. If you have your inspector still open here in the video section, you're gonna click on dynamic zoom. 
and dynamic zoom will zoom automatically now by default it zooms out but i want it to zoom in so i'm going to click on swap and then when we play it it should zoom in all right great so what i'm going to do next is hit the b key once more and come directly below the other cut and click on that portion of the video and that creates our cut and I'm pressing the A key to go back to our normal edit tool. So now what our video looks like is this. Now you see where that cut happened between the camera angles. It was kind of jarring, at least for me. So what we can do is put our cursor between the cuts and put it exactly where we want to. So I want myself to disappear right when the camera angle changes, which should bring me maybe about right there. All right, so we're gonna get in a little closer. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and roll my mouse up so I can have a finer look at it. And I'm gonna drag right until the camera angle changes. Perfect. Laura pulls the lever, set up. Door opens, we back up, we run off the cliff, then we react to the fall. Slow zoom, you get your funny. We aren't done yet. What we're gonna do after this might seem a little bit intimidating, but it's not bad, trust me. We're gonna click on the color at the bottom. And under this third color wheel here, you see you have SAT here, that's your saturation, that's how much color is in the image. I'm just going to click my mouse there, drag it to the left until it goes in black and white. So now what we can do is go back down to the bottom to our edit, and then we can see what we created. All right, now the last thing I wanna do is put a comedic touch on it with a sound effect. So I have this sound that I've downloaded. There's videos to teach you how to download things on YouTube. I don't really want to get into the detail of that because I got in trouble last time. But this is really where you add the differentiating factor for your videos. So I'm gonna just put that maybe about there. And let's drop it. And what I'll do is let you hear what audio is actually playing for my computer because I've had it muted this entire time. And let's see, see if we can get it. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, you just can't get into it because they would never understand. All right, and then we are just going to grab the end of that sound and pull it all the way back. And as we can see, it's pretty much balanced already, so we don't have to do anything there. So after we've done that, we've created our edited TikTok, and it didn't take us super long. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So then I'm gonna click on deliver at the bottom right and we are going to do custom export. And we're gonna make sure that is once again, 1080 by 1920. Our frame rate is the same as we made it before. We're gonna to add to render queue. And I will save this, my desktop, we'll call it a fall. I'm gonna click save. And right here on the right corner, it is in our render queue. So I'm gonna click render all. And depending on your computer's performance, it will buzz right through that. And this is in real time. I'm not editing the uh, video at all here already. And now it's on my desktop and we will play it back. Okay, so I was opening doors. I guess I just forgot that I was pulling levers, opening new doors. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, you just can't get into it. That wasn't so hard, was it? So, again, just remember to trim the fat, and if I can learn how to use DaVinci Resolve, you can as well. It's not that hard. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below, pop in on Discord, pop in a stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, old school Saturday, and I can help you out but I can't wait to see those TikToks. And of course, if you like the video, then like the video. That was just one of the simpler TikToks I could make. Throw in other video clips, throw in other sound effects, throw in anything that you think will make your TikTok stand out more funny, more shareable. And I'm saying TikTok, but you know, reels, shorts, 
whatever else you want to post it on tweets whatever even if it doesn't pay off you've learned a new skill and knowing is half the battle class dismissed Shout out to Corliss JC, Dr. J, and Mocha Medics for being tier three patrons. But when I first saw the video, I thought the dude was like, come on, man, no, 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 no! Anyway, I thought the dude was trying to 